Hello, YouTube. Let's dig into another mystery box once again. Using my trusty keys. Right? I just can't for the life of me find my uh, regular box cutter. So. so there's that. No introduction, no nothing. I'm just gonna dig straight in. Come on, you little prick. It's always great when the box is actually falling apart. Jesus. There we go. Oh god, packing peanuts. Are you freaking kidding me? Oh well. Well, first of all, get a power cable. It's in great, it's in great condition. Get a bag of drugs. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> You'd almost think it was. Uh, original packaging. From way back when. Let's take a look at this stuff in a bit. And of course the uh, power brick and the star of the show. Which is this right here. You might think this is a deja vu, but it is in fact uh, a different kind of Mac Mini G4 than I had before. I was just, you know, looking around for some good deals and I... Suddenly I realized that uh, I always liked the original Mac Mini, and especially the PowerPC ones. Ever since I got rid of my G4, I've always been thinking like, well, I want another one of these back. Even if it's just for collection purposes, or just to do one stupid little uh, task somewhere on the network. Uh, so that's basically why it's here. This is the original Mac Mini model, the 1.25 gigahertz. From what I've been told, this machine has a gig of RAM. And uh, everything else is pretty much bone stock, 40 gig hard drive. Uh, regular combo drive here on the front. And uh, not much else, really. There's not much to it. Here on the back, we have the basic array of ports. We have the power input, the 100 megabit Ethernet, 56K modem, DVI, two USB 2.0 ports, and a Firewire 400, headphone jack, and a used Kensington lock. So this machine was probably used in some sort of office or school environment. Who knows? Not that I really care. From what I've been told, the machine's been uh, fully reinstalled with its original software, which would be OS X Panther, but uh, we'll see about that. Let's actually go back one step to this stuff here. Let's start with the plastic here. This, this, this actually still sealed. Now that's always amazing when I find stuff that's still really brand new. It's only freaking Chinese though. 2004 Apple Computer Inc. Other junk, whatever. Huh. Well, this is for a different kind of thing. This is actually an original CD for the Airport Extreme software for the soft for the Airport Extreme that was current at the time. So the uh, 802.11G variant. Still a sealed Airport software CD. Wow. I'm not going to touch that, I'm going to let that stick in its seal. This is probably something for a... It's just an envelope from something like a rebate or something, or to register something. But it's in Chinese, so I'm just... I'm going to assume this thing was bought in China back then. Which is pretty cool. But I think the coolest is still uh, in this pocket thing. Little... Uh, Let's see if I can keep this in one piece. Yes, I can. It's always nice to have the somewhat of an original unboxing experience. So what do we have here? Mac Mini, Mac OS X install disk one and Apple hardware test. Very important. I will run the hardware test to make sure everything is in order. Corporate 2005, Mac OS version 10.3.7. So that's indeed Panther. We have the user manual. 
the original Apple stickers. Completely untouched, still original. <laughs> Coupons for Mac OS X Tiger and iLife 04. Single user license. And iLife 05 DVD. Again, completely sealed. So that's pretty neat. All right, so there's that. I've made an entire mess of my bed, as usual. Uh, let's see how many CDs are actually in here. As far as I'm aware, Panther should come on either three CDs or one DVD. This is disc one. It's still shining stuff. But it comes with two discs. Oh, what, 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 oh, eh. You can see what I read, right? Mac OS 9 install disk, damn. By the way, I gotta swap my battery real quick. All right, battery swap completed through the magic of video editing. Anyways, so, uh, Mac OS 9 install disk. That's very weird because, as far as I'm aware, these machines are not actually Mac OS 9 capable. They should be OS 10 only. So I'm really interested. This is if this is in fact an original disc that would come with this Mac Mini, this would indicate that this is only a classic CD and not an actual Mac OS 9 CD. This is probably used to uh, uh, enable and install the classic environment, if I had to uh, make an educated guess. Well, let's actually find out, shall we? Uh, I'm gonna set up the Mac on the disc and then we'll take a look at uh, what's what. I'm very interested to see what that Mac OS 9 CD is all about. Alright, the Mac Mini is good to go. Let's push the power button and see if it works. Mmm, nice and distorted. Alright. It's not sounding particularly healthy though. Let's see if my monitor is going to pick up a signal. I'm going to move all my junk out of the way. I'll probably have to switch signals. Whoops. Let's go to VGA. Oh, right. I already noticed my mistake here. When you're dealing with multiple old systems like me, sometimes you stumble upon the wrong cables that are not connected to anything. Now it's connected to the right VGA cable. Yep, that should be the right one. Still no output. I guess I'll have to forcefully reboot it because it's not showing anything. Okay. I gotta say though, it's not the healthiest sounding hard drive ever, so I'll probably have to replace that at some point. But that's okay. I think I've got some spares. And if not, I'll just order a uh, laptop IDE to MSATA adapter and put an MSATA SSD in there. It's not like I haven't done that before on PowerPC Max. There's just something about PowerPC that I just can't resist for some reason. They're just very interesting and quirky machines. I mean, they're, they're useless, they're obsolete, but uh, they're fun to play with, nevertheless. So that's why I just keep buying these things. <laughs> I just have to, uh, you know, this one actually is in very good condition, so I'll just have to uh, buff some, uh, some, some small scuffs out on the aluminium. I think I'll be able to uh, get it up and running nicely. It's not a fast hard drive though. Not even in the slightest. Right. It says auto adjust, but it's not adjusting anything. There we go. It also has airport and Bluetooth. Wow. I didn't. I knew it had airport, but I didn't know it also had blue or uh, didn't also have Bluetooth. 
So that's pretty cool. So that's pretty darn cool. So the iLife 05 suite is already pre-installed, so that's nice. Come on, our drive queue. All right. We zoom in a little bit. And as you can see, 1.25 gigahertz power PC G4 with a gig of RAM. Here is the system profiler. In terms of video, we have the RV280, which is the Radeon 9200. It's currently running at 1600 by 900 resolution. USB 2.0 stuff. Firewire, Airport Extreme, Worldwide Locale. That's good. Let's zoom back out. So that's a good start. Now I'm really wondering about that OS 9 CD. Because what I want to know is whether Classic is already installed on this, or whether it actually is just a matter of running Classic. And I'm also curious as to whether the optical drive is still uh, working. Here we have Classic. Classic is not running. Okay. It sounds like the optical is doing something. Mac OS 9 install disk. This might actually be a uh, an actual retail OS 9. No, it's just Mac OS 9 system support. Okay, yeah. This is a classic installation disk. I guess I expected that, so that's good. This is basically a way to install Mac OS 9 compatibility into your Panther installation. And this should also work for OS 10 Tiger as well, which I will be putting on this machine. By the way, I didn't actually check the hard drive in this. Uh, about to smack. Uh, ACA, there we go. It's a Seagate 40 gig. Okay. I'll have to check if I have anything better than that. I think it's okay-ish right now. I will wipe this though. I will uh, put a completely uh, new installation of macOS on here. Because quite frankly I like my installs as clean as they can get and I want to uh, get everything set up the way I want to. So uh, I guess that's what I'm gonna do. I just have to dig out my Tiger disk because I don't really care for Panther at all. So, uh, so there's that. At least this machine works. I'm very happy about that. So let's actually connect to Wi-Fi. Jesus Christ, this is annoying. Uh, let's see that one. Let's see if it will allow me to connect or whether I'll actually have to hook up Ethernet to get this on my network. Nope, it's working, good. Let's go to Safari. Safari can't open the page. Well, that's a bummer. Let's go to google.com. That works. Somewhat. On Safari version 1.2.4 from the year 2004. Yeah, so there's that. Well, at least we have some good things to uh, to mention here. The optical drive is still working, the Mac Mini itself is working properly. So that's very nice. It's upgraded to a gig of RAM like I anticipated, so that's very nice. It has the original installation disks, it has a sealed copy of iLife 05, and a sealed copy of um, some kind of airport uh, software utility for the old airport uh, base stations of wireless G times. Man, times have changed. That's basically all I want to show in this video. This is just the basic unboxing and the first look at the system. Uh, once I've got everything set up, I'll revisit this machine and uh, we'll take a look at uh, what I've done to it and how it's running. And uh, maybe we'll uh, play around with some games and software on it so we can get a better feel for uh, what it was like to use a machine like this back when uh, it still had supported software running on it. I hope you enjoyed this video, I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.